All right, well, we're making our way through this chapter one step at a time. Uh, but be aware, we're about to get messy, so let's pay attention to the details again. Um, our Now our problem is, apply equation 59 and 60 to the rotating dipole of problem 11.4. Explain any apparent discrepancies with your previous answers. Okay, well, what was equation... 59 and 60, well, that was the pointing vector and power radiated, right? And if we're following along, that's pretty quick to deal with. Uh, we see that we get the uh, pointing vectors mu naught over 16 pi squared c with the double uh, double time derivative of the electric dipole evaluated at t naught squared. Then we also have a sine squared theta and uh, over an r squared in the r hat direction. Um, and then the power radiated, once we time average that, and cancel everything out in the integral, we get a mu naught over 6 pi to this over C, uh, P double dot T naught squared. Okay, so that's sine uh, goes to 4 thirds, and then the, um, the R's cancel, so we get rid of that. We've seen the no integral a number of times, so we won't spend too much time seeing how the power radiate got there. Um, but let's go ahead and see what we're dealing with. So the rotating dipole was given as P of T is equal to P naught cosine omega T X hat plus sine omega T Y hat. Take uh, the derivative twice, and we see that we uh, just get a negative from the trig function derivatives, but we also get a uh, omega every derivative due to the chain rule, And but we get back to the original state. So what this tells us is that P double dot T is equal to negative uh, omega squared P, the actual, uh, the original dipole. So, you know, we can be aware of that and be careful, uh, but when we square it, it's the same as taking the dot product with its, that's the same as it taking the dot product. So the constants get squared, and that's what we see, but also uh, cosine dotted, or the x hat dotted with itself gives us cosine squared, and also sine squared, and we know that cancels to one. So the square gives us p naught squared omega to the fourth. If that's the case, uh, we see that the pointing vector is um, equal to mu naught p naught squared omega to the fourth, that's important, 16 pi squared c, and then times sine squared theta over r squared in the r hat direction. Now this disagrees, but the power does not. The power is mu naught uh, uh, p naught squared omega to the fourth over 6 pi c. Uh, why is this the case in particular? Well, this really comes down to how we define the orientation of things. So the pro in 11.4, the reason why uh, equation 5.9 gives us something different is because 5.9 references the polar axis, which is in the direction of the uh, P double dot, okay? Uh, but, you know, if we're rotating, then the axis have to rotate too, and that's not taken into account of here. Um, I'll get, I'll put some more writing about that in the description, but, uh, yeah, be aware that the orientation for the vector matters, hence why it's a vector, you need magnitude and direction, so let's not lose our physical intuition of that fact, uh, although it's simple. Uh, now for the power though, this does agree because we have integrated over all angles, and so the orientation of the polar axis is irrelevant, but be aware. Little subtleties like that will catch up to you, especially in these darn research papers. They always get you.